OK, so now we know how to define a class. So how can we make an instance? Actually, uh, from those previous examples, you should already know that how to make an instance. So to create to create an instance from a class, so it just tells the name of the instance, equals the class name, and also provide those required attributes. So for example, those required attributes in the initial method or in the other methods. And once we have this instance or once we have this object, we can use the dot notation, dot notation to call those methods or to access those attributes that are defined in the class. So for example, in our previous example, we can see my Corolla dot maker, which will tell you that the maker is, uh, is Toyota. And we can also see my um, Corolla dot report. So that will also report the maker and also the model. OK, so that is a way to call the instance. Uh, that is a way to call the method or the function. That is a way to get the attribute. And also keep in mind that the object attributes are mutable. So that means if you want to change the attribute value of an instance, you just need to use this dot notation of the existing attribute equals to the new value. OK, by doing that, you, you can change the attribute of an instance or of an object. All right, again, let's go back to our uh, example of the of this car uh, class. So here we can see we have the maker, which is Toyota. And also we have this initial method, which will require input. And also we have this report uh, method that will report uh, the model and also maker. And now if we see my car called Corolla, OK, and uh, if we say print uh, Corolla dot report, so that will report um, uh, the model and also maker, which we already did. OK, and if you want to access those attributes, so for example, if you want to access the maker, so you can just talk uh, dot maker. OK, so which is Toyota and if you try the model. OK, and that is Toyo uh, Corolla. And we also said that uh, those attributes are mutable. So for example, if I say my uh, um, Corolla dot maker equals fault okay so now i just change the maker uh, from uh, the default one toyota to a new value which is the fault now if i say print my corolla dot maker so now let's run this one print okay and you can see that uh, the maker is not fault. And if we call that function, the report method or report function, you can see that uh, the model is Corolla, is still Corolla, Corolla, but however, the, the maker is now has changed to fault. Okay, so that means that uh, we can change the values or the attributes. Uh, of the object. OK, uh, so now we have uh, finished the class. Actually, we have finished all the uh, programming design of the Python. But you may have heard that sometimes we call the Python modules, uh, Python package or Python library. So what are those stuff? So strict, strict, uh, so strictly speaking, that a Python module is just the py file that it defines one or more functions or classes. So for example, we have those LEC one, two, three, those Python modules dot py. OK, so those are all the Python modules. And the Python package refers to a dictionary of those Python modules. So in this class, we have RA, OK, 241. So that 
can be considered a Python package. Well, um, Python library. So Python library is designed with the aim of being able to use by many applications. OK, and also uh, it is also published. So if you search online, there are a lot of Python libraries available. And I think in our first class, I mentioned that one reason that we want to use Python is because there are a lot of Python libraries that are available and we can use those Python libraries. So that means we can use those modules that are um, already been defined, created by other people. And the import function or import method, import function will load a Python library from our local computer. OK, so if we have those Python libraries that are Python package or the Python modules that installed in our local computer, we can use this import function. And if you don't have those libraries that installed on your local computer, so that is very common for most common um, Python libraries, so they will not come by default. So you can install those Python libraries to your local computer by using this PIP command. OK, so this PIP command in the terminal, so not in Python. So in terminal, if you run this pip, so you can install Python libraries that from the internet into your local computer. OK. OK, so let's see one example. So here right now we are in this lecture 9 um, Python module, which is lec.9.py. And if you remember that in lecture 8, we have defined those functions. OK, and both Python module are in the same folder. So now if we go to the lecture 9, and let's say we want import lec8. And now you can see actually we can import all those Python modules that are in this folder. So let's say import lec8. OK. And now we can call the functions in this lecture 8 uh, Python module. So for example, in this Python module, we define a function to calculate the factorial. Right? OK, so let's call this function. Let's say print lec8 dot. So now you can see we can use all the functions that define in this lecture 8 module. So let's call the factorial and what we want print calculate, calculate the factorial of the 5. And now if we write, OK, and we can see we have this result. OK. Uh, you may wondering that why do we have the other result being printed out? OK, so that is because when you import these Python libraries, uh, you can see we have multiple print functions. OK, so let's uh, comment out all those print functions. OK, so that means in this Python 8 module, we only defined those functions. So we don't print, we don't call those functions. And now if we go back to our lecture 9 module, so now let's say we run this function. You can see we, we only have this one result. OK. Uh, so now let's say we want also import this lecture 8 module. So here let's create another one. Let's call it lec9 part 2.py. OK. Uh, so in this case, let's say we want to import lecture 9. And the reason is because we want to use this class. OK, so we want to use this class as it defined in this module. Uh, so let's see here my car equals lecture 9 dot car. Here we give it. Uh, the model which is required so Toyota okay now let's say print uh, my car dot let's call the report function okay uh, so here uh, you can see we have the model is Toyota and also maker is also Toyota. 
So let's go back to lecture nine. So let's uh, clean all those print functions. Okay, so let's just use the def just leave the definition of the class. We also do not import the lecture eight. Okay, so here for this lecture nine class, we just defined in this lecture lecture nine module. We only defined a car class. And now let's say we just import lecture nine. We define our own car, which the model is let's let's give it a right model. So let's call it uh, Corolla. OK, so now let's write. So here you can see uh, the model is Corolla and also uh, the maker is Toyota. OK, uh, so finally, so let's say we want to import another uh, Python library. So that's, that's a very famous one. And we are talking that one later in this semester. So let's call it NumPy. OK, so NumPy is a very uh, important uh, Python library that for data analysis. So now let's run it. OK. Uh, so here we have an error. So the error means that there is no module called NumPy. And the reason is because Lecture 9 is already in our local computer, that, that Python module. However, the NumPy Python library is not installed into our local instance on the local computer. OK, so how can we install the NumPy? We already said that we can use a pip install. So let's go to the terminal and let's type sudo sudo. So that means that we are using that one as a super user. Super user do this function and call it pip install numpy. Okay, so the pip install is a is a command that uh, will install this numpy library that from the internet. Okay. So now if we hit enter, you can see we are downloading this one from the internet. OK, uh, it may take a, a few seconds. And now you can see this one has been successfully downloaded. And now if we import this NumPy, and we will not see the error. So now let's run it. OK, so you can see NumPy has been imported successfully. So let's say print numpy. OK, so you can see this is a module that is installed in this local environment. OK, uh, and also remember that if you, to install a Python library, so you just need to install once. OK, so install to in, install into your local computer. Uh, however, if you want to import a Python library, so every time when you run the new Python code, you have to import that Python library. So pip install just need one time import. So you, you need to do it every time when you run that Python code. OK, so that is a lecture for the class.